Exotic life forms deep in a radioactive uranium mine have been discovered by scientists in Europe. In this video, you can find out which life forms thrive there unnoticed under massive radiation, what this has to do with aliens, and exciting original footage from the radioactive depths, so be sure to stay tuned until the end. And if you like it, I'm galactically happy about a thumbs up and a comment, because that's how we get the YouTube algorithm to show this video to even more people. Thank you, friends, and welcome. Germany used to be a uranium producing country, but if we look at the list of the largest uranium producers in recent years, we see that Germany has been producing zero tons of uranium per year for some time now. In Soviet times, uranium was actively mined in the Königstein mine and supplied to the Soviet Union. However, the mine has been closed since 1996. Some smart Oleks among you will now say, but I saw in the table that Germany has been producing uranium for much longer. In fact, a certain amount of uranium is still produced when old mines are cleaned up. Since the closure of such mines, attempts have been made to purify the mine water by using filter systems to remove the uranium from the water. And of course, the uranium extracted can then be sold as a side effect. However, the amount of uranium in the water from the Königstein mine is now so small that nothing more can be extracted from it. The last load of uranium sludge weighing just under 20 tons was transported to the USA in 2021. I wonder on which platform uranium sludge is sold, eBay? Well, it sounds like that's the end of the story. The mine water cleanup is going according to plan, the uranium is sold and the mine itself is flooded. Peace, joy. Uranium cake, not so fast, because the mine still holds some radiant secrets, as researchers have discovered. Scientists wanted to find out what flora and fauna had formed down there. A flooded uranium mine like this is literally the wet dream of every biologist. How does life fare in a wet underground biotope with high levels of radioactivity? Quite well, as we now know. Take a look at these pictures taken by the researchers. It looks like a real microbe party. And indeed, what's hanging from the walls and ceilings are microbial life forms. Researchers found orange-colored acidic microbes on the walls that looked like long, thin worms and slimy brown and white formations that looked like stalactites seeping from the ceiling. It all looks like something out of an alien movie, but it gets even crazier. The published research paper states, not only bacteria and archaea live in radioactively contaminated environments, but also species of eukaryotes, clearly indicating their potential impact on the carbon cycle in an environment affected by acid mine drainage. In other words, life down there is very diverse. And the mine inhabitants are amazingly complex life forms. Most of them are not single-celled organisms, but multicellular eukaryotes, i.e. organisms with a nucleus that are capable of more complex things like respiration and cell division. And the largest of these microorganisms in the uranium mine was 50 micrometers wide and 200 micrometers long. That would be visible to the naked eye. The question is how these organisms manage to thrive under these extreme conditions. The key lies in the low pH value, the high sulfate concentration, and the high concentration of heavy metals in the mine. I know that doesn't sound very cozy, but for microorganisms it's like a five-star hotel. Many bacteria are acid lovers. They obtain energy by feeding on the mine's abundant iron and sulfur reserves. It is precisely these acid connoisseurs that form this slimy stalactite structure that can be found on the ceiling of the mine. These slimy deposits look a bit disgusting to us, but for eukaryotes, this is a real star dinner. They, in turn, feed on the acid-loving bacteria, and even larger multicellular organisms then feed on the eukaryotes. This process continues and a well-organized food chain system develops in the mine. The only question is, which organism is at the top of the uranium mine food chain? The study states, eukaryotes colonize extreme habitats to a greater extent than assumed and may play an essential role in carbon cycling in the acid mine drainage milieu. So a radioactive, abandoned, flooded mine is a place where life can thrive wonderfully. But I can already hear some of you screaming, What does this have to do with space? Tim is only allowed to talk about space. This discovery is super exciting in terms of the search for extraterrestrial life, because it shows that life is very resilient and can adapt to the most extreme conditions. And where are the conditions often very extreme? That's right, outside the Earth, everywhere in space. There really are many places in our solar system alone that could be potential habitats, but were previously considered unlikely due to their unfriendly living conditions. On Venus, for example, it rains acid. However, as we now know, an acidic environment is not necessarily hostile to life. 
If life on Earth can thrive in environments that are literally corrosive from a human perspective, we must also include extreme places in our search for life. For example, exoplanets that are completely radioactively contaminated or with huge oceans of acid, all conceivable. And in fact, a new study suggests that even exoplanets that are far away from their stars can harbor life and oceans if enough energy is generated through radioactive decay. The study, which I have linked to below, states, the presence of a liquid solvent is still considered an essential requirement for habitability. Our analysis suggests that super-Earths with radionuclide abundances more than 10 to the power of 3 higher than on Earth can harbor long-lived water oceans. So you see, such discoveries as in the Königstein mine therefore provide super important implications for the search for aliens. Even at the Chernobyl nuclear power plant, life forms have now been discovered that thrive, not despite the high radiation, but because of it, a fungus called Cryptococcus neoformans feeds on the radiation and grows in the Chernobyl ruins exactly where the radiation is highest. A quick reminder that you can help me a lot by subscribing. If you watch this video and haven't subscribed yet or know any space enthusiast friends, I would appreciate it if you could help me spread the word about the channel. Thank you. Otherwise, feel free to click on the next video. I'm sure you'll be just as enthusiastic. And if you want to support my work, visit the Astro Shop and get the t-shirts from the videos, cute plush planets and real meteorites. Every purchase helped me to continue the channel. Otherwise, I'd say see you in the next video. Take care, friends.